Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Brian at Bitcoin Summer. Thank you for joining me. Another crazy week in Bitcoin land. I don't know if all, any of you saw this, but we took about a $10,000 drop on Tuesday, the day that El Salvador officially made Bitcoin legal tender in the country. I'm not putting on my biggest tinfoil hat, but I'm going to put on a small one and say, hmm, the IMF has been talking some mad shit and the president and the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, by the way, kind of tied in with the World Bank. It's a predatory lending outfit and worldwide, they take third world countries, give them loans, and they are beholden to those loans, kind of like a loan shark, and they get sanctions put on them, and it creates economic destruction, and when you have a broken money system, you have a broken third world, and it bleeds into the first world as well. What Bitcoin does is bring everybody up, you know, the, the rising tide lifts all boats, and so it's it was very hard to watch on Tuesday. There were also DDoS attacks. So all over the Lightning Network, which I'm going to be talking about today, there were a bunch of attacks on the system. The system proved to be resilient, didn't crash. Bitcoin is still clicking along, 10 minutes per block. And we are better than ever and stronger than ever. And we're getting all of this FUD behind us right now. And it's just sad to watch all of these unelected officials in power grasping at their last chance, their last grip on power. And slowly we're taking it away from them because once you control the money, you control the world. And when the people control the money, the people control the world. And I'm so excited at what happened this week. You know, the the price drop didn't matter to me whatsoever, and it shouldn't to you as well, especially for somebody that has a very long-term outlook as to what this can do for the world. So in order to help El Salvador payment systems in any way that I possibly could, I looked at it right now. Actually, let's jump into it right now. So I just noticed that we're at one sat per byte. So I'm going to open this channel up right now during the intro of the show. Now, I found this guy named Diamond Hands, and he has a public node. And there were a couple of criteria I was looking for. So one of them was having a, a, a wide capacity. So they call it girthy in the, in the industry. So I wanted someone with a lot of girth. And that means a lot of Bitcoin on their Lightning Network. And not only that, but somebody who is a partner of one of my partners already. So that way, there's just a lot more connections that can route through your node and potentially earn you sats. So I found this uh, Diamond, Diamond Hands guy, and I already added him as a peer. So let's take a look at his 1ML one, one page. I'm going to copy right here, and I'm going to just paste it into the 1ML website. And let's do that right now. And... As you can see here, he has a pretty solid rating on his node. So another thing that caught my eye about him, and this is the reason why I chose him to open a channel with, especially a wide channel, because I just transferred some more Bitcoin into my node, and I, I want to open channels with that. So what really caught my eye about this particular person, not only that he fit those first two pieces of criteria... But also, I'm going to just scroll down here, as you can see. So here it is right here, this Ibex channel. Now, this is the reason why I wanted to link up with him. So I'm going to go into my lightning.plus, and I'm going to show you why I think it's a good idea to hook up with a guy that is connected to this node. Now, the infrastructure in El Salvador needs to be built around the lightning payments. And so McDonald's, and we'll get to that later on in the presentation, but also Starbucks as well, they had to hook up with these nodes to get payments. So as you can see here on lightning.plus, the Ibex Mercado is a major payment processor in El Salvador. And so they were asking for inbound liquidity. They, I'm going to click on it. They are number one 
in growth right now, currently. And that's because of this week. And they asked for this inbound liquidity from people on Twitter, and people just gave it to them. So I'm not, I, I missed the boat on that. It was, the fees were too high when I had the opportunity to do it, so I just skipped it. But if I connect to somebody that is connected to that node, I have the possibility of making that channel a lot stronger. So they, if they need payments to route through me and my partners, they can do that. So it's just going to be good for everyone all around. And also, this guy is also on Open Node, and that's another uh, node that supplies El Salvador area. So this is really exciting for me. I am going to open this right now because, like I said, the mempool is really low. It's one sat per byte. So now's the time to open channels, folks. Now's the time to do coin join. Now's the time to just do all of the transactions you need to do before. Because once the price stops starts popping more and more over the next couple of weeks here, these transaction fees aren't going to stay much longer. So, so here it is. We're going to open the channel. Open it and pick my peer. I'm going to do 5 million sats. And like I said, one sat per byte. So I'm going to just do auto. It'll go in the, with the next block. Open my channel. And there it is. The channel is pending to be open. And what I'm going to do is actually go... I'm going to show you guys how cheap this was. So I'm just going to show you in here at my pending transaction. This only cost 2,155 sats. So that's like not even a dollar for almost a $2,000 channel. That's, that's why we do the channel openings at times like this instead of waiting for it to get a, a lot busier. So that's that. And like I, like I hinted at, we are going to be talking about the Lightning Network today. So I've been I've been hinting at this and promising it for a couple weeks now, and finally I'm getting around to it. I already have the node setup video, so we have our nodes set up at home. We have our channels open because I have our channel opening video as well up on YouTube. And now we are going to be talking about the basics of the Lightning Network. So it's a little bit backwards, I'm sorry, and that's why I was promising it for so long. But we're going to be talking about the basics of Lightning and the benefits of it and why this is getting missed by most people who talk about Bitcoin or are Bitcoin critics. The Lightning Network is a sleeper, but the people who know about Bitcoin know the benefits of it. And that's why a lot of us are really, really excited because this thing is going to take the world by storm. And there's no doubt in my mind that it will. And all of those reasons will be revealed today here on Bitcoin Summer. Out of the housing market. They price this out of the education market. They price this out of the stock market. They continue to price this out of day to day goods. We need to take this back. And this is our time to do it. Let's talk about the Lightning Network. These are the basics. Now, it can get ex uh, extremely more complicated than what I'm going to cover today. But I just wanted to get the basics down just so people understand before they jump into running their own node or before they download their first Lightning wallet. What exactly is the Lightning Network? So we're going to discuss that today. We have a lot to get to, so I'm going to jump right into it. Before we talk about Lightning, we need to talk about Bitcoin, which is what Lightning is built on. And Bitcoin is actually running on top of a decentralized public ledger, which is called or referred to as a blockchain. And Satoshi actually called it a time chain. So people are trying to use time chain now, but they, they are interchangeable, just so everyone knows. But what Bitcoin does is secure, it secures your coins so well that it trades off speed and it trades off privacy. So in order to get that intensely secure network, it transactions run a little bit slower and your privacy is taken away from you to a certain degree because this is a public ledger. So 
Reasons being, and there's three big reasons why this happens. So block space is scarce. So when you're using the network, when it's congested, this can get very expensive. So as I just mentioned to number two, transactions run relatively slowly. Now, slowly is in the eye of the beholder. It's usually like under an hour for a transaction to clear. But think about traditional finance. It takes at least a couple days for your bank to transfer money for you. It takes T plus 3, they call it, in the investment world. So T plus 3 is your trade, and then you add three business days onto that for you to get to be able to withdraw that cash out of your brokerage account. So in traditional finance, Bitcoin is, when you compare it to that, Bitcoin is insanely fast. But comparatively to other coins and definitely the Lightning Network, Bitcoin is slow. So that's just a hint at what's coming up in this presentation about Lightning. So the information is broadcasted to everyone on the network, and that takes away your privacy a little bit. So everyone knows those transactions that are going through. They don't necessarily know who that's coming from, but it could be traceable, and you could kind of find out the origins of those, and they could trace it back to you, depending on what's going on. Um, there's other ways to get around that, like coin join and things like that, but that's not in the scope of this episode. But stay tuned for that. Think of Bitcoin right now as like a layered cake. And so everything runs on top of Bitcoin. And that's the that's what they call the base layer. So again, that runs off of the, the blockchain, and that is the base layer. Now, as you can see here on my diagram, Lightning Network is the second layer built right on top of the rails of Bitcoin. Why will it lead to more accelerated adoption? Because this layer two solution, it solves that first slide that I showed you, the scalability and the privacy limitations, the speed and the privacy. So there's also um, apps being built on top of layer two. So like, uh, like a peer-to-peer -peer wallet like Strike, those are all called layer three, so that's going to be built on top, and that's the application layer of Bitcoin. These third layer applications that are built on top of Lightning, they look very similar to the apps that we already use on our phone, like Cash App and things like that. So this is going to create a lot of familiarity with a lot of people, and this is why I say it's going to accelerate adoption, because when things look like things that you're used to, you're more willing to try them out. So you can also run your own Bitcoin node at home and it'll help you monitor and transact on the base chain and the Lightning Network. So having a node at home, you're kind of the master of the Bitcoin layer and the Lightning layer. So that's kind of cool aspect of it. So what exactly is the Lightning Network? It is instant. It is micropayment compatible. And it is private. So how is it instant? Well, the transactions settle off chain. So like I was talking about before, when it's just going every 10 minutes, you have to get on that block and then wait for that block to be confirmed. And Lightning Network doesn't deal with the chain until you're done opening or closing your channels. We'll get to that later. I don't want to make it too complicated right now, but you're tr just know for right now, your transaction settles off chain. You can do micro payments on it bitcoin it doesn't make a ton of sense to do a five dollar transaction or a three dollar transaction because the fees can wipe you out at that point but everyone always talks about this thing where you can't buy coffee with bitcoin well you can buy coffee with bitcoin but you're going to want to use the lightning network and that's what people don't understand about it and this is why i'm here so how is it private transactions are not broadcasted on the public ledger so let's move on because we're going to dive deeper into that so how does lightning work exactly i like to say it's somewhere between a legal contract and a bar tab so when you open up a channel with a partner you're entering a what's called a smart contract you may have heard that in the ecosystem that term has been bouncing around for a little bit but just like in the real world, if the contract is breached, someone, so that means someone's not following the consensus rules of Bitcoin in this case, 
a judge will step in. So the judge in this case will be the blockchain. And that judge will determine who gets compensated. And that means who will receive the Bitcoin at the end of this arbitration. It is a way to you separate the fortress-like Bitcoin core to a trustless transaction where it is not in anyone's best interest to cheat. So both Bitcoin and Lightning do this, but Lightning does it off-chain. So let's move on to Lightning nodes. So as I pointed out in my YouTube video of building a Lightning node, nodes monitor the Bitcoin blockchain. So you interact with other nodes that you want to transact with. And how you do this is through channel partners. So the channels are the things that I refer to as the bar tabs. Except for, unlike a bar tab, payments can go both ways in both directions. So you're not just paying the bartender. You can be the bartender as well. So opening and settling your channel are the only times that you're going to be doing a transaction on chain, on the Bitcoin core blockchain. So this is where you create privacy and not to hammer this point home too much, but you can create an unlimited number of transactions before somebody closes the channel. So it's not just like Bitcoin where it's one transaction and then it's settled and it's done. You can settle a billion transactions if that channel stays open and you can keep it open indefinitely. So how exactly does a channel work? So both participants in the channel lock up their coins in a smart contract on the base layer. So that's the first step. So those payments are unlocked on the Lightning Network. So those coins that you locked away on the Bitcoin layer, those get unlocked on the Lightning Network. So you're free to use those. So the reason why this is, is so you can't double spend. So you can't, coins can't be spent in multiple locations at the same time. You can obviously pay your channel partner and they can pay you back. You created this channel so you can send payments back and forth, ad infinitum. But that's not very helpful because how, think about how we interact in the real world. You have a vendor, you pay them, and you go away. And sometimes you never see them again. So this doesn't make a ton of sense if you can only transact with that one partner. So it's called a network for a reason. So just by linking with a couple partners, you can make payments to just about anyone on the network with just a couple. It's like the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. You know, you're there, your partners with their partners and their partners with all of your partners. So as you can see, like you only need a couple just to, to bring everything together and to create this network effect. And that's what, that's what's the coolest part about Bitcoin. In my opinion is the network effect. And so at the same time, this can lead to people having to route, transactions through your node to get to one of your partners because they might not be partners with them so they'd have to use you to hop over to your partner and in which case you pick up sats for this usually if you set fees for it you can put zero fees but it's another way to passively earn sats and i'm going to be doing a channel fee management video coming up here as well so hit subscribe make sure you don't miss that so let's keep going with channels I think of it like an abacus. So think of each sat like one bead on the abacus. Obviously, you're going to have millions of those, but let's do it on a tinier scale just to create a model. So your liquidity, your personal liquidity will be on the left-hand side, and your partner's li liquidity will be on the right-hand side, as you can see. Now, if you send three sats over... Those three sats will move to your partner side. So those three sats will move to the right. And you started with 10, right? It's an abacus. You start with 10. You move three over to the right. So now you can only send seven more through that channel. But now on that channel, you created the opportunity to now you can receive three sats back on that channel. So that's what everyone says by having balanced channels that's an ideal uh, status to be in because you can receive and send the same amount of sats 
on one particular channel. Now, granted, you're going to have multiple channels open. If you have some channels that are coming just inbound, and if you have some channels that are just going outbound, it, it'll kind of work itself out. But sometimes you'll just be completely unbalanced. And if you can only receive sats, you're not going to be able to route through and send sats through. So that's one of the reasons why you want to balance channels because then potentially you can earn more in routing fees. I want to talk about the parabolic lightning adoption. Now, I was mentioning earlier today that it's going to lead to mass adoption, but that's not even what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about just people that are joining the lightning network and running their own nodes. The network capacity surpasses 2000 just like a month ago. And as you can see by this chart here, it is going completely par parabolic. I mean, it is just skyrocketing into the atmosphere. And this is only going to get better through time. And also on top of that, Jack Dorsey announced that Twitter will be opening up lightning payments. Twitter, one of the biggest social media apps in the world. So just insane level of adoption is coming down the road if you're short bitcoin you are not doing it right so what's happening is el salvador making bitcoin legal tender in the country is forcing the hands of these large corporations to partner with these node companies in order to give them liquidity in order to have them receive payments so people were posting all over these payments now look starbucks starbucks is has a node <laughs> i mean you know this guy's making a payment at starbucks he's literally buying a coffee and then this guy bought a whatever he bought a coffee or something at at mcdonald's mcdonald's is <laughs> mcdonald's has a node and they're taking lightning payments this is just insanity to me i i honestly i honestly i've been in this for a couple of years i didn't think this was going to happen for another 10 i'm not kidding so uh, this is just mind-blowing to me this is just absolutely awesome so this is where my mind goes and i just love this post bitcoin payments on the lightning network can save every retailer in the world 2 to 5% in transaction costs. Now, they simplified it a little bit. Though that 2 to 5%, that actually gets passed on to the consumer. So, it's not exactly true what they said here, but I think the point still stands because in my opinion, they're not going to lower the prices, especially in this day of inflation, rampant inflation. I, I just, I, they're going to take the opportunity to just keep the prices where they're at. And if they're not paying those Visa and MasterCard fees right at the point of sale, game over. I mean, McDonald's is going to start looking at their transactions in El Salvador and be like, wait a second, what? This is how much money we saved? I mean, it, we're talking billions of dollars. And also we have remittances. And this was a huge thing that I've been pushing about El Salvador is, as you can see here, and this is Bitcoin Beach, and, and Bitcoin Beach is kind of what um, triggered all of this El Salvador adoption, but they've been using in El Zante, which is Bitcoin Beach, They've been using lightning payments for quite a while, but they made a super good point here. People are going to be saving by not having remittances. So by what I mean by remittances is what Western Union and other money wiring companies will charge you. And usually there's a flat fee. So the lower that you send your family in El Salvador, you work in the United States and you send your money back to El Salvador, they take a huge chunk out of that. Especially if it's a lower amount, if it's like a hundred dollars, you're you're talking about we're you know we're in the ten to fifteen to twenty percent range. Four hundred million dollars that they're taking out of the pockets of Salvadorians. This once they realize the money that they're also going to be saving, besides just McDonald's, they're going to be adopting too, and this is just going to be a cascading effect. 
I mean, Western Union are done. I, I just, I don't see them surviving another couple of years. So let's round it out here with possibly the third layer and beyond, and we're going to be talking more about that down the road. But as you can see here, Visa MasterCard, they're already making plans. They're already getting on the train. And we don't know if they're going to be using Lightning or they're going to be another layer two and just go right off of the Bitcoin network. But that being said, big things are coming, especially if we start getting, like I said, into the third layer where it looks like apps that we already use. So people are like, they don't even know they're running Bitcoin. Like the Strike app, if you used it and you just use cash, you don't even know that it's using Lightning payments in the background. It's absolutely amazing. So I was playing around with it today. This is coming up. It's lightning addresses. So it looks just like an email. It has an at. So that's interesting to me because, hey, just send me money at blah, blah, blah. And I mean, there you go. I Like I said, if it looks similar to what people use already, they're going to be more apt to use it. So we're talking about gaming. You can earn Bitcoin while playing video games podcasting 2.0 so my podcast is on breeze wallet and also on sphinx and you can literally stream sats while you're listening or don't stream sats and just do tips while you if you hear something that you like you just you know tip 100 sats all of this stuff is coming down the road like a freight train but it's a slow freight train a lot quicker than I thought it was going to be. But still, it's a slow freight train. And because it's not fast, people aren't excited by it. They're more excited by buying a NFT and buying the next Bitcoin. I got news. There's not going to be a next Bitcoin. So buckle up. We're going to do this. We're going to get through this. And I will see you next time on... Bitcoin Summer.